there is a lot of confusion among designers surrounding what file formats to use when saving graphic designs. And some designers consider certain formats to be king and other formats to be completely useless. The truth is that SVG, EPS and PDF all have their time and place. They also have pros and cons attached to them too. So another awesome resource for learning essential skills as a graphic designer is Skillshare. Now Skillshare is a community of creators that holds over 25,000 classes on design, business and other useful topics. And regarding graphic design, Skillshare boasts a wide selection of courses by professionals in their respective fields. You can learn more about Skillshare and how to get two months totally for free later in today's video. Now SVG refers to Scalable Vector Graphics and that should suggest to you some of the power it has. An SVG is a vector file format, which means it can be scaled up to any size or down to any size and still retain quality. Now one thing to take into account with SVGs is that they are the standard for World Wide Web Publishing. It is best used for web-based graphic designs. It's a great format for saving designs that will predominantly be used on screens. Now each SVG file is based on the XML, which means that all of the information regarding the design's color, shape, line curves and text is all stored within the readable text files. Now this subsequently means you can technically go in and make edits to your designs right within the code itself really really easily. SVGs can be animated and styled with CSS. Animations that utilize HTML elements can also be used on SVG elements too. And again, this is another indicator that SVGs are really great for on-screen designs. But some things to keep in mind are that when you save artwork in SVG format, mesh objects are rasterized. In addition to this, images that have no alpha channel are converted to JPEG file formats. Images with an alpha channel are converted to the PNG format. Also, SVG only works with two-dimensional imagery, so things like photographs don't really work with this. Now, printing with SVGs is possible, but it's not ideal. Most designers who are supplied SVG files from clients will tend to open them in a vector application such as Illustrator and then resave them in either native files or EPS PDF for print. Next we have the PDF file format, which in short means portable document format. A PDF is widely seen as the modern vector graphic standard for print design workflow. When you save a design as PDF in Illustrator, it also saves the design as a file native AI format inside the PDF file itself, which is unflattened later for editing. That is only if you preserve the checkbox in the preserve Illustrator editing capabilities when you go to save the PDF. A PDF format is becoming widely favored by most designers as it can be universally viewed on any computer with Adobe Acrobat. It's also possible to preserve Illustrator editing capabilities when saving in this format, meaning that it can be opened and modified in some way like an AI file can. A PDF is one of the main go-to file formats by printing agencies, if not the most widely used print file format. However, PDF files do have a few drawbacks. Now, firstly, PDFs were made to be shared and read on different operating systems, which is of course a great thing, but this makes them difficult to edit between differing computers. If you're sending a design to someone for them to edit later, PDF probably isn't the best choice for this task. And lastly, we have EPS, which stands for Encapsulated Postscript. Now, EPS is the legacy vector graphics standard for print workflow, and that means that basically it's pretty old. Some designers refer to EPS as a dinosaur and they discount its use completely, but the reality is that many designers and printers still use it today for various different reasons. EPS is still very popular for applying your artwork to the printer, whereas SVG is primarily used for the web. Some applications such as Inkscape, Sketch and so forth cannot write AI files, but they can write EPS files. So using EPS, you're not restricted to only using Adobe products, which is pretty handy. Also, EPS supports transparent backgrounds, which is handy when you're utilizing those in your designs. 
And also, of course, as with the other two formats in today's video, EPS is a vector-based format, and so you can scale the design to any size and retain quality. When printing, EPS is very powerful because it's reliable in the sense that you can be sure that whatever you put into the design is exactly what you're going to get in the final output. Unfortunately, if you use an EPS graphic on a non-postscript printer, you are going to get some unpredictable results in the print outcome. But yeah, EPS is kind of a dying format, and because it uses the encapsulated postscript, it cannot make use of features that are available on postscript. So in short, and to summarize, the best practices is to reserve SVG for the web-based graphics that you want to make, and also for animations. PDF is the ideal format for printing, and also for sharing files to be viewed, but not to be edited. EPS is also great for print, and it can be read by many differing programs. But when sending final designs to clients, it's probably wise to package at least these three file formats to the end user, so then they can make the decision themselves on how to use the files for specific functions. So like I mentioned, today, I'm offering you the chance of receiving two months access to Skillshare totally for free if you do use my link down in the description box below. Even without this offer of two free months, Skillshare only costs $10 per month, which really does open the door to a wide range of useful lessons and courses, all delivered in a professional and a neat manner by successful people in their relative fields. So do be sure to check out Skillshare, link down below, and start learning some new skills and some new techniques today. I will leave some links down below for further education on this topic, but if you do want to keep learning essential skills as a graphic designer, do make sure to subscribe to my channel for weekly graphic design content. And also of course, click that bell icon to keep updated to all of my graphic design videos on this channel. Do have a great day and take care out there, and until next time, design your future today. Peace.